Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. And we are continuing our live coverage of ESEC 2023. Now, if you've been watching our videos, you know this is going to be an interesting one. We're here at Jurgens with Mike. Mike, thank you very much for having us. Thanks for coming by. Now, I want to talk about the ball lock system that we have, but before we do, I want to take a look at some of these things here that I have not seen before. This is quite the assembly. What are we looking at here? So this is our uh, self-centering hydraulic vise. It's the hydraulic version of our manual five-axis vise. Um, comes with either machinable aluminum or steel soft jaws. So yeah, so it's a real simple setup. Um, it can run off just a basic air over a hydraulic pump. Uh, you know, and you, with this, you get the benefits of hydraulic. So I can actuate it remotely. So that's great for automation applications if you want right. to load a part in and out with a robot. Um, and then also the other added benefits of hydraulics. So the big thing is going to be the controllability. You know, um, if I want X amount of pounds of force, right. I can put exactly that much on there. You know, if if we get 20 people in this aisle to come throw this valve, it's going to be very consistent, super repeatable, as opposed to you know, we're not counting a, on one big guy, right. and one small. Everyone's person. definition of what tight is with a with a manual wrench differs quite a bit. The so. amount of parts kicked in my shop out of vices yep. would agree with you there. So. Now, the one thing I did see here, so we do have this Jurgens ball lock system. Right now, we're just running, I think we actually have this vise on one of these plates. We have a, a larger version of this vise that actually goes straight on the table with those jigsaws. This kind of looks like the next logical step for what we should do. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, so this is, you know, a, I would say a real typical application with ball lock. So, um, like I said, we've, we've been doing the vices in, in recent years, but really, Primarily, primarily what we sell with ball lock for the top end, the fixturing piece, is just a blank fixture plate. So really, you know, you think of, think about that like a, a blank canvas, if you will, for, right. the, for the user. So sometimes they have an older style vise or a three jaw chuck. They just want to mount an existing piece of tooling on that plate, or you know, they can build a high density fixture here. So for more of a you know production application, where okay, I've got a machine with this amount of travel in this envelope, how can I maximize how many parts I get on there? So, and yeah, real typical. The swapping out of these kind of vices quickly is useful. This is where, in my opinion, this kind of system is really gonna shine. Right, so you can do a palletized type deal where maybe you have a duplicate of this fixture. So one of the drawbacks with a manual high density fixture is the load and unload time. So if right. I've got 60 parts on here, you know, does that really make sense to have my operator, my machine's not running, making any chips, taking 15, 20 minutes loading and unloading all these parts. With something like this, I can just take this fixture with the parts still clamped, do all my load and unload. While another cycle is already running. Exactly, exactly. so they just drop another fixture in, hit and the cycle start. One big thing go. that I, one piece of feedback I was getting back from some people who saw the system was, well, you know, this stuff's expensive. Think of how, how much money it is to put in. This is where really, I mean, we were talking a little bit of before, this is where you're gonna get that return on investment very quickly because what, if it takes me, how long if I had to put those in one by one? Yeah, so I mean, cycle it, time. it's, what we found is, is, is that the payback with uh, setup time reduction is huge. I mean, if you, if, you, if you, the more, people are getting into more of the high mix of parts, low volume of run. So maybe they're spending two hours a day setting up a machine. If we can take that two hours a day, take it down to five to 10 minutes, you know, what does that add up to over a week, over a month? That's, Especially when you're talking shop rate. Right, that's, that's a huge savings. And also that frees up more machine hours, so maybe now with the, with the additional availability of machine hours, I can go after uh, you know, some new jobs I, I maybe couldn't do before because I didn't have the available machine capacity. And we haven't actually had to change anything with the machine. All we did was add this in. Absolutely, yeah. Now, Very if we're simple. moving down here a little bit more, I was really interested to see these. So as far as I know, this is when I think of a zero point system, this is what I would think of, but what are these here? Yeah, so, you know, this is more common size of, of zero point systems out in the market, but this is actually the smallest zero point out there right now. Um, you know, this is how, this is how big it is. That's the it's clamping tiny. module, um, yeah. Now, the other thing that I saw with these, and correct me if I'm wrong, in order to release the ball lock, you need to put air to it. So if this fails, if for whatever reason I'm running this and my air dies, that's actually gonna be secure until I can release it with air. That's correct, so our zero point systems, whether it's a pneumatic version like this or hydraulic, it takes pressure to release it. So, as you said, the benefit of that is there's a fail safe there. I don't have to worry about maintaining pressure to my lines. I don't have to worry about lines in my machine. 
it's always going to default to a clamped state, which is not pressurized. really important because I yeah. want to see one of these go through the window of my machine. Absolutely. And this here, it looks like we have some kind of small fixture here, and that is also on a zero point. Yep. So, Sorry, I'm undoing all your clamps no, that's here. Okay. <laughs> that's why we brought it. Yeah, so you can see if you're getting into maybe a non-machining application, maybe I'm doing some laser marking or assembly of small components or an etching type deal, I don't need this big heavy pulse that I can get by with something this small, um, you know, for doing a small fixture change. Or maybe this is something, because it's so lightweight and small, I can put on the end of a robot, you know, right. for an end of arm tooling type application as well. And what kind of shops are you seeing putting this kind of system in right now? Um, again, for some of that lighter duty assembly work, um, the marking type stuff, laser marking, um, you know, that kind of stuff, like that automation. And then moving on to this here, this is a smaller version of what I recognize as a ball lock system. Yep. I haven't seen the shanks in this size. Yeah, so we make ball lock actually a variety of sizes. So like the the size you have on your machine is, is probably typical of what we have out there. About this size. Um, yeah, between 16 up to our 25 millimeter. I think your machine is 20 millimeters. But right. Yeah, we get down to these little 13 millimeter size again. So for some of that smaller light duty stuff, um, we also go up to 50 millimeters. So you, know, you go up to 50. Up to 50. That's yeah, for so, some very heavy so work holding. Yeah, about two inch diameter. So yeah, we've put that on very large machines. We put it on great big uh, VTL type applications. So yeah, it, it's you're not worried about taking is it a apart. System, it, yeah, it's very much at home doing real light duty stuff and all the way up to very heavy duty stuff as well. So and moving on from the ball lock just a little bit. I recognize these here as our self-centering vices. What are we looking at here specifically? Yeah, so this will be a typical, um, you know, five-axis setup. So we've got our pyramid riser. So obviously, with the five-axis, you know, application, you want to have that pyramid with those vices angled out, so you have part axis all around. Um, yes, yeah, so we have our subplate. We're combining systems here. Actually, we've got our grid system, our um, just our, our basic QLS, which is just a tap, uh, bushed and tapped grid on here. But we're also using ball lock. So a lot of times. Whether it's zero point, our grid system, ball lock, we like to combine those. I, I mean, there's no reason not to. It gives Why customers not? flexibility whether you want to do something with a smaller footprint with our quick lock system and the vices, or you want to do something bigger. Like we could take that red plate and throw it on the sub plate and it would, it would drop right on. And see, that's the other thing I just want to point out. Right now, <laughs> this could go onto my table if those are 20 inch um, shanks. I could put that on my table and then have a grid of smaller ball locks in order to get more versatility out of my table. Absolutely. So yeah, we have we have a full team of applications engineers that design and lay out custom subplates for customers, and that, that you know that's a lot of a lot of the time what we're encouraging people to do. Okay, don't just think about the job you have right now. You're going to take the time and investment to put that subplate on your machine table. You know, think about okay, if I had this flexibility down the road. Um, you know, what kind of capabilities that could open up for me. And for users using something like this, how do you find the buy-in in terms of getting people on board with thinking that way? Do you find it's a difficult process to get them to stop thinking about putting vices on the table, start thinking about modularity, or do you find it generally pretty easy once they kind of get their head around that process? Yeah, I mean, it, it's not it's not uncommon for, for us to, you know, tool up one machine and then have it kind of organically spread throughout the Percolate shop as they, you know, as they see the benefits there. Um, but like we were talking about with the ball lock, you can still utilize your old tooling. So you can still put your old vice, your old chuck, your old fixture on a ball lock plate and it doesn't restrict you from you know, doing some something more productive with your fixturing down the road. You still can use that same subplate, that same foundation to do that. So exactly. you're, not, you're not restricted to a single path. It's not like these plates go and automatically reject all my old vices just because it's not Jurgens until yep. I get everything over Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And then what am I looking at here? This looks like a very strange application, not strange, very complicated application of the self-centering vices. Yeah, so one of, again, we have the same style subplate here. So one of the advantages of our, our self-centering vices, they're very easy to, easy to, to re-center. So you can do that from the top end of the vice. So, in an application maybe where you want to hold a part across two vices, like in this application, we want to have one vice more or less be the master and this right. one kind of follows it. Cause we don't, you know, you're never going to get those center lines out of the box perfect where no. you don't want to fight this part and a thin wall part like this Dang distort it. it. So, you know, you, you can have the one vice set and then very easily compensate this other vice to it. So it works well. You can line two or three of these vices up. And do you um, see a lot of people doing this right now with this kind of setup? 
Yeah, so you know they're either doing it with our soft jaws. So here we have a dovetail machined right into our soft jaws, or yep. they're going to use one of our dedicated dovetail vices to grab on. Uh, oh, you guys yeah, actually have dedicated. Yeah, dovetail so this vices. is our this is our oh right there dovetail vice right here. That's got that already in there, so you could do your yep. material prep. Use that as a five-axis yep. vice yep. if you wanted. Yep. Very very strong. It ain't going nowhere. Now, Absolutely. Mike, where can people find out more about Jurgens if they want to learn about the ball lock system, the self-centering vices, or any of the other products? I mean, the best place to start would be our website. We just launched a new website this year, so um, yeah, feel free to get on our website. It's got all the contact information for all the uh, um, all the people that can help you out, whether it be our engineers. Um, we also have uh, three highly skilled and very experienced um, technical field managers. So guys that are working with our sales reps, going to visit customers, individuals with literally decades of experiences building and designing fixtures that can help people out. Okay, whether it's implementing our standard products or doing a full-blown custom design and build project, we can do that as well. So. And if you guys want to see this stuff in use in the wild, check out my YouTube video where I went through, installed this in my shop. We were making good parts, same day we set this stuff up. So make sure you check that one out. Mike, 